Well, welcome back to Norfolk and our 90 panel solar arrays looking very fine here in uh, late August producing currently just under 30 kilowatts uh, of electricity in this lovely bright sunshine and uh, cool breeze that we've got here ideal solar generation conditions few fluffy clouds to frustrate you every so often it dips down but we've now finally got to the position with these where this array is doing its absolute utmost in terms of reducing our reliance on the grid so let's go and show you the additional equipment that we've got now installed and working and talk to you a little bit about tariffs and where we're at with feed in and export well i've come now round into our plant room uh, an old outbuilding on the back of the farm where we were able to put all this equipment and if you're contemplating solar pv what you may not actually realize until it starts going in is all the boxes and uh, various bits of equipment that you're going to need to get this working so in the center there is our solace inverter that is what's taking the uh, the dc current from those three parallel rows of panels and converting it into ac power the white box on the uh, left hand side this one here that is our three phase mains supply board that's our main board for the house which wasn't in this position initially and had to be moved so that was uh, a big job in itself bringing the main supply through to this but the reason it's been bought through here is because these three beauties were put in the three tesla power walls back to back um, just over 40 kilowatt hours of uh, tesla power storage above them their own fuse box gateway above that the uh, small white box the very top uh, butting onto the ceiling is the the tesla gateway now they all need 32 amp power supplies direct cables all of which have to be a similar length and they have to be positioned close to the fuse board here and they also need to be uh, close to the the solar inverter which you can hear makes quite a noise let me just see what we're generating see if we can get a focus on that there we go maximum output at the moment this is limited to 30 kilowatts and as you can see it's jumping around at that level so although the solar panels have the ability at peak to produce 35 kilowatts the most we're ever going to generate out of this system is 30. now that's because um, there's another box that you can't see here which is our export management uh, controller which basically limits our export of power to the uh, national grid at 25 kilowatt hours sorry well 25 kilowatt peak we can't export more than 25 at any one time now the game changer here and what you don't realize and what they don't talk to you about is it's a combination of things the solars went in in October and that was great we started generating power brilliant you think we've generated since October in excess of 29,000 kilowatt hours 29 megawatts we've only used 50 percent of that and the rest has been going to the grid for free up until last Tuesday it's taken us since October right the way through to um, the 22nd of August to get a tariff an export tariff in place now part of the problems with that were getting a three phase meter put in um, before that we had a um, an old fashioned meter which wasn't really doing the job it was giving us uh, nighttime low rate uh, economy seven tariff on the old tariff that we had with bulb but obviously they went into liquidation had to wait for octopus to take over the contracts which they finally did as soon as they did octopus was straight on the job and we were able to book the installation of a three-phase meter with a three-phase meter that we could then apply for an export uh, contract with uh, octopus our import went over to their octopus agile which we found incredibly good our average input charge uh, is around 18 pence 17.79 pence per kilowatt hour during august the export rate that we're now on with octopus is their fixed rate 15 pence and since going on that tariff we've had six days of measured export with with octopus we've exported 390 kilowatts 
The other game changer that's gone in place is the Tesla Power Walls. Now, since they've gone in, we are basically we should be importing absolutely no electricity whatsoever. But the other thing that we found with the, the management system, the Tesla gateway that's humming away up there, when you get changes drop off in the uh, amount of electricity that's being drawn through uh, the farm, and when a cloud comes over your solars, obviously the power that they're outputting goes off, there's a lag. And to respond to that, the gateway will draw from the grid 200 watts, 300 watts, 400 watts, maybe for four or five seconds. And then you'll see it pumping the same amount back in. So it's it's giving us net zero, but we are still on our octopus tariff importing between 1.7 and 2 kilowatt hours per day. We're exporting on average between 40 to 80. On a really good day, if we've got no cloud cover, we can be exporting uh, 120, 130 kilowatt hours. So now we've got the the, the tariff in place and we're being paid for those export uh, units we're certainly going to be building up some credit even during the the late summer months through to i guess probably around the end of october there are going to be days when these power walls don't sufficiently have enough energy in them but usually they are charged up fully by around 10 30 11 o'clock in the morning these are on each one of them is on a single phase of our three phase network so phase one phase two and phase three we can charge them at 15 kilowatts, 5 kilowatts per, per feed, and we can draw 5 kilowatts out of them. So we can easily export, sorry, draw from the power walls 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 kilowatts at any one time. We did get shown by the fitters some videos where they were concerned whether they were going to do something called phase discharge, which is where if one phase of your power supply is drawing, say, nine kilowatts, the controller draws that out of the battery that's on that phase, but simultaneously tells the other two batteries to discharge at nine kilowatts, which would then go nowhere because you've got no draw on the, uh, the phases within the building. So it, it gets exported to the grid. That doesn't seem to happen with the way these are wired in. And it may be because this is a three phase solace inverter. So if I just talk you through what's happening, power is coming through. These are our three rows of panels going into the strings. So we've got six strings there going into the inverter as DC, coming out as AC. The AC then goes into the power walls through these three cables. The power walls convert it back into DC into the lithium cells. They then have inverters inside that when you're drawing from the Tesla power walls, produce AC current that goes straight back in through this circuit and the gateway into the mains supply here. So that power, as I understand it, from the power wall is stored as DC, X comes out of it as AC and then goes straight back in. And that's able to do on each phase simultaneously without any problem so we've got the full utilization of over 40 kilowatt hours of storage and what we see every evening um, we've got uh, a drawdown from when the sun goes down and we are usually at 100 percent throughout the day and then at around six seven o'clock currently when we stop uh, generating any power the draw on the house is usually quite low by then so we see a gradual drop off in the power wall levels to around 60, 55, 60 percent uh, by the following morning. And then they start charging up again and are fully charged by 10 o'clock. So the, the 20 to 25 kilowatt hours of power that we're using from the sun going down to the solar powers generating again is now being completely provided by the Tesla power walls. And the only power that we're drawing from the grid is that balancing a uh, small amount of draw going in and out, in and out, but obviously we still have to pay for the stuff that we bring out. They're now crediting us finally for the, the amount of power that we're putting in. Octopus have been really good. I've got no problems recommending Octopus to you as a power provider for this type of setup. And to my knowledge, they're still with the fixed 20, sorry, it's a 12 month contract that they're offering for that fixed rate at 15 pence. The advantage of that over their agile export rate is that the, the simple dynamics of when you're producing the power is when the export rates on the agile export tariff are, are low. 
With batteries, yes, in theory, what I could be doing is uh, clicking the, the time controllers on with these and telling it to export during those peak periods of time. But to be honest with you, do I want to bother doing that? I'd rather just quite happily just leave this system well alone now, have all my own power during good weather and good daylight hours during the summer and have the 15 pence per kilowatt hour when I'm generating it and just let the system manage itself because well half the joy of having the batteries is having the power stored that you're generating here and being able to use it when you want it and that's really why we've paid for this system um, 24 carrot question everybody asks that comes and sees this system how long is the payback time going to be i've got no idea and the reason i've got no idea is i've got no idea what the price of electricity is going to be tomorrow or the next day let alone in six months time or in two or three years time when hopefully this is still generating uh, a good volume of reliable cheap free electricity for me as i see it now i put the capital investment in i know it's a big upfront cost to get to this situation our next challenge is going to be when we start seeing the daylight really going off and uh, it's going to be interesting watching this system we've had the solar powers now for over 12 or coming up for 12 months they went in at uh, end of october last year so we haven't quite got 12 months data on what we've been generating but i know october november december starts getting a bit iffy on the the amount of power that you're getting and particularly around here uh, we've got trees all around our solar panels the uh, arc of the sun gets really low by 20th of December, we've got one row of panels that we've got on a very high um, angle. We've put those at 60 degrees to try and optimize some generation during those winter months. Uh, as a tip we got from the, the Swedish boys from watching some of our videos. So uh, we'll see how we go this year with the power walls in place. I know there's going to be days when we're, we're going to be self-sufficient and long periods of time when we're just not generating nearly enough power for what we are going to be using on site. So interesting times and uh, I'm very pleased with the system so far. It's been a big learning curve putting it all in, finding out what the limitations are and how these systems cobble together to give you, you know, what you think is going to be an easy fix, but actually has been a real struggle to get meter fitted, tariffs in place, um, dealing with you know they, they call the people that you export to your dno just to confuse you an area of it's the people that provide the network for you in this area it's uk power networks but they just don't say contact uk power networks they say contact your dno which you're just supposed to know these things when you buy a solar system so make sure when you get your solar system put in that the guys that put it in get all the certification in place and that they apply for your export uh, certificates and that they get you an export MPAN and an import MPAN all at the right time so that you're ready to go as soon as you've got your meters in place. That's my top tip from this video for anybody considering solar. Oh, and don't do it on a three-phase supply because that really complicates things but gives you a lot more versatility once it's all in the right place.